and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video here, I am actually going to be proving the reusability of my reusable paint base. So I'm expecting a lot of you have watched that video and you're coming here to see what this thing looks like three years later. It's a particularly snowy day, early March here. Um, I have taken a look at it. It's stored kind of just beside the garage over here. I'm not sure if you can see it in the window there, but it's been sitting there for about three years. Uh, the plastic's looking pretty rough, so we're gonna pull it out of the, uh, kind of beside the garage, gonna bring it in here, set it up so I can paint my Elbiz at Duramax and kind of see how it looks. Uh, I think it's gonna take some patching and some work, but I'm gonna actually prove my assertion that this thing is reusable and it's three years later. So let's see how it goes. All right, so pulling out the fence here to pull out uh, the two bundles of walls here. So I bundled them in a pair of two and then a bunch of four here to try and protect them from the elements. Uh, my buddy Scott's here to help me haul these things in. They're not ridiculously heavy, but uh, you need two people to move them for sure. And you can see it is a particularly snowy day. It just so happens that's when I want to do my painting. So Scott and I are just hauling these back into the garage so we can assess them a little more readily. So as you can tell, uh, the plastic did not survive, despite the fact there was no sunlight getting in there, at least no direct sunlight. So we're just going to basically abandon this stuff, and this was fairly cheap uh, poly, 4 mil poly to start with. Obviously it was insufficient for three years sitting outside, even though it was fairly well protected. Uh, I did attach this with staples and then silicone, and the silicone was still there actually. So gives you an idea what the end pieces look like uh, once they've been cleaned up a little bit. A uh, little bit of darkness, a little bit of mud, a little bit of rot, not too bad. And so now we're actually sizing up where the new vent is going to go. So this time I want to vent it out the side, and this was sort of an idea I had now that I'd removed my four pulse lift. I could actually move it over to the other side. Uh, although the last time I, I did it on the opposite side of the garage. So now we're laying down the new poly. Uh, this is a six mil poly I'll talk about in a little bit here that is supposed to be UV safe and it is quite a bit more expensive. And we're wrapping it and stapling it. Uh, I'm not being quite as diligent this time with the silicone. I felt that it was quite airtight enough even just with the staples. And we wrap around and staple on the back side. So that way it, it holds a little bit better and also a little bit more airtight in doing it this way. So this is exactly how I did it last time, just I'm not adding any extra silicone. I do have sort of the silicone from there from last time, which is sort of acting like a bit of a gasket. And I still think that's a good idea. And just trimming it to fit. Um, that last piece there, we actually end up having to use just some, some wrap. I got some from Home Depot that I did run out of the UV stuff. But anyway, now there's, there's a whole lot of... Um, Tetris trying to move all the pieces around to find the space to fit everything in and uh, we got Jack helping out Jurassic Jack hold, holding up the walls there so they don't fall on us um, but we're trying to get them lined up in the right order here in the right spot so I'm trying to find where all the old bolt holes were um, so one thing I would recommend is mark those which panel goes where so when you're doing this again next time in your reuse stage you know exactly which one goes where because I didn't and we had to try a whole bunch of different things and of course the floor, uh, this is a tarp I got from Princess Auto. Uh, I think it was about 16 feet by 14 feet or something like that. Now here I'm screwing the ends in with a GRK R4 multi-purpose framing faster. Uh, these are really, really good for cinching them together. Uh, you want a good screw on the ends, uh, whereas the sides were holding together with carriage bolts uh, just because they have to be really, really strong. And now also attaching the front end again with that uh, JRK. And they're a good long fastener. I think they're, they are fours for four inch. But they really suck the boards together because you don't want an air gap in there. And your normal conventional constructions or decking screws just aren't going to suck them in quite as much as you need. And now we're putting up the top. Basically, you set it on the edge here. This is just uh, basically two, uh, two, um, two by twos that uh, stretch the entire length across. They're 16 feet long. And I screw them down on one end and then we unroll it across. So now I'm just doing the screen down part of it. All right, so it's standing up. Uh, lost a little bit of footage at the end there when we were doing the ceiling, uh, just because the battery died on my camera. But uh, basically we just unrolled the ceiling across the top. You can see that in the last video. Um, so obviously it's it's here, it's, it's technically, it's being reused. Uh, 
few things that we had to deal with. Number one, the plastic that I sourced last time, uh, I'll show you a, a link to it on Amazon where I got it from. It was not UV safe. And even though the, the panels were being stored outside of the sun, I think there was a lot of reflected sun that got to them. And then that combined with a little wind just, just disintegrated them. Like they just kind of turned to dust as soon as you touch them. So I've rebuilt it now with what's called four year UV safe um, poly six mil. So before I was running four on the side, six on the top, now I'm running six all around. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you the link to that one here. Um, you know, made in the USA, supposed to be UV safe. So we'll see if it lasts longer this time. But so right off the bat, if you're doing this for the first time, you know, and you want it to be reusable, buy the UV safe stuff. I think that's a given. Uh, outside of that, there weren't really problems. You know, there's a little bit of dirt and, you know, mud attached to some of the pieces. So we had to clean that off. Um, the ceiling fared quite well just because it was rolled up and it was sitting on the ground. So it has a little bit of mud on it. Uh, but for the most part, once you unroll it, it's, it's clean. So there's a few spots there that I have to clean. Um, other than that, I did install a different vent this time uh, to vent out the side window rather than out the main garage door. That's just going to save me from having to open the garage door. And it is cold here again. It's uh, minus 17 today. So it just seems like whenever I want to paint, I got to crank the heat and, and turn it up. So a few things left to finish, obviously. I don't have any of the filters in. I still have to run the electrical and turn on the lights. Um, yeah, that's most of it. a little bit of taping. There's, there's one hole that I made by accident and I want to tape a few of the seams. I'm not going to go as far as on taping as I did last time. I think that was a little bit of overkill. Um, and I'm going to be venting directly out through the window with no filter. So, um, so that's called a, a negative pressure booth. So you can do positive or negative. I'm choosing negative once again because it worked so well last time. So with that, a um, little bit more footage of us finishing up here, and then it'll be on to uh, painting my LBZ Duramax. So here I'm starting by putting up the uh, the center beam. I had kind of forgotten about this, but it keeps the sizes the size equidistant apart and adds some strength to the roof, so I can hang parts from up there. So this is just a 10 foot two by four, and I just put it up on uh, two little two by four chunks that are seats. Uh, I'm filling in the window here, so I want it to be airtight to the outside. So this is just some chunks of cardboard and then test fitting the fan uh, works pretty nicely. And I decided rather than running five filters across the front, I really only need three given that I only have the one fan drawing air out now. So it remains to be seen if that was a good or a bad decision, but I wanted there to be just the filters not to be, the ins not to be too close to the outs if that makes sense. Here Jurassic Jack's helping me just suspending a few more boards. So I just kind of throw these every which way and then I, I'm attaching little hooks and I use a hook with a fishing line to hang things up. All right, so here we are in the completed uh, paint bay, affectionately known by my girlfriend as the kill room. My date's gonna kill me in the kill room. <laughs> took a good day to set it up in, in that we had to replace all the plastic and then another kind of pretty lazy day to just get all the accessories put in like the shelving and the filters and the, the lights hooked up and the racks in the ceiling and so on. I did have a slight mishap with my fan. I had to replace that when it fell. So, um, But otherwise it, it's ready to go. Um, one of the big things is I chose to left, leave the uh, or build it actually around the bed of the truck. And the reason why is it would be really hard to fit the bed out through that door, in through that door. So we just built it around it. And then I'll have a plan to actually remove this wall to get it out. And so I, when I was building it, I designed it so that it would be, it's about 10 screws and bolts in order to get the, uh, to wheel it right out of here because it's on wheels. So uh, I will show you that uh, towards the uh, conclusion of the video here. But other than that, uh, it's up, it's ready to go. It's definitely reusable. Um, you know, I this is a lot of work like it's almost a weekend's worth of work to set this thing up. Uh, is it worth it versus getting an inflatable one or getting a, you know, um, a, a greenhouse even, which is another idea that I've seen in the past couple of years. So, you know, could that work? I would say that this is very high quality. Um, you know, you get the hard walls, you can suspend things from the ceiling. Um, you know, it's built to suit, right? There's a lot of clearance, a lot of headroom. Uh, good lighting and very very good air sealing so that's the one thing about this is when you turn on the fan the walls suck in so uh, you get pretty good air tightness out of this particular design 
and ultimately that's going to yield you a better paint job. So, but uh, thanks for tuning in again, and hopefully you check out my LBZ builds video series where I'm actually going to be painting the truck next. So, thanks for tuning in.